So I'd now like to cover how IP address plans will assist with planning multi-homing. An IP address planning is actually a very important part of multi-homing, especially for traffic engineering. A lot of network operators don't think about this, or they leave the management of their address space to a customer sales organization or the customer deployment organization, when in fact the address block and the address planning belongs firmly and squarely with the network engineering and network operations. Typical service provider address plans are set up such that they split the address space into four parts. There will be address space for end users, the customers. There will be address space used to address the link from the service provider backbone to the end user, typically the point-to-point -point link addresses. There will be address space used for the service provider's infrastructure, again, typically the point-to-point -point links that are connecting the routers across the network. And there will also be a small amount of address space for the router loopbacks. And these four blocks make up the service provider address plan, as you can see in the diagram below, where I have an example of a slash 21 that has been divided between customer address space, customer point-to-point -point links, the infrastructure point-to-point -point links, and the loopback addresses. Now, service provider router loopbacks and backbone point-to-point -point link addresses make up a small part of the total address space. And routers do not attract traffic. They're not browsing the different content around the internet. They're simply moving packets. Whereas customer address space attracts traffic because the end users are doing all the downloads and their uploads and whatever other work they're doing when connected to the internet. The links from the ISP aggregation edge to the customer router needs a single slash 30 in v4 and a slash 60 4 in IPv6. These are small requirements when compared with the total address space. Some service providers don't even use addresses on these point-to-point -point links. In Cisco IOS, we use a feature called IP unnumbered or IPv6 unnumbered. However, planning customer assignments is a very important part of multi-homing. And traffic engineering involves subdividing the aggregate into pieces until the load balancing works satisfactorily. So we need to pay close attention to the address space that's assigned to the customers and to the address space if used on the point-to-point -point link between the service provider and the customer. If the customer is using NAT, then they will be NATing onto the point-to-point -point link address from the service provider to them. Now, if we don't do any planning with the IP address space and we simply consider our address block as a, a long tube and just start filling up the tube from the left-hand side, as the diagram shows, the traffic engineering is not really going to work here. Imagine we have two links. Up to now, I've said, well, take the aggregate, announce it on both links and then take the aggregate and divide it into two. Announce one piece in one link, the other piece in the other link. Well, if we just number the customers sequentially from the left, then all the traffic will come into the first half of the address space and there'll be a nothing at all for the second half. So we have not been able to do any kind of traffic engineering here. In fact, the only way we can make traffic engineering work is subdivide the extreme most left of our address space and try and balance with that. And then when we add another customer, it upsets everything. And another customer, it gets upset again. In fact, this becomes so hard to manage, it's just unmanageable. Some operators have realized that it's unmanageable and just simply announce the smallest amount of address space they can to the internet, resulting in the serious pollution of the internet routing table we see today, full of the smallest prefixes advertisable slash 24 in IPv4 and slash 48 in IPv6. It's not scaling for IPv4, but it still works, just. 
and it simply will not scale at all for IPv6, with a large number of slash 48s that are feasible out of every single slash 32 that's distributed to a network operator. Instead, we should be doing planned IP addressing. Rather than filling up the address space from one end of the range, we should divide the range into two, number the odd-numbered customers from one side and the even-numbered customers on the other side, for example. And then the scheme becomes quite simple. In this 21, we announce the two 21s on our two external links. We announce one 22 on one link and the other 22 on the other link. It means that traffic for the first 22, customers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 in the diagram, will come in one link. And traffic for the other customers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, will come in the other link. So we'll have some kind of rudimentary load balancing here, assuming each customer is doing more or less the same thing on the internet today. Or you could adopt another strategy. Maybe the first 22 is for residential customers and the second 22 is for commercial or enterprise customers, or some other allocation to suit. But the important point I want to make here is IP address planning is critically important when it comes to doing traffic engineering for multi-homing. So this example works fine for multi-homing between two upstream providers. We could also subdivide the address space to suit more upstreams, maybe three, maybe four. Although, as you see, trying to do the traffic balance will get harder with more upstreams we have. And the important point is, don't forget to always announce the aggregate out of each link. 